believe it's me. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so half of the day has uh, kind of responded, but I'd say he responded with his his own what he accuses others of, which is I'll call it an erroneous, uh, blunt assertion that uh, somehow you can hide <laughs> reality in things. You know, you can just put them in some place, and all of a sudden they're not real anymore. So something can have intrinsic value, and somehow you can put it in some sort of magic box, some Schrodinger's box or something, and all of a sudden it doesn't exist anymore. So you just put it in a them, and it goes away. <laughs> yeah, uh, just, yeah, sorry, this is just, this is made up. Um, dishwashers wash dishes, okay? Uh, the dishes have been washed. It's a fact in the universe. It's not in a particular dishwasher. The dishes are not unwashed because they're in somebody else's dishwasher. I mean, I made, I made the argument that a child has properties. Uh, yoring it and theming it doesn't really have anything to do with any of the basic properties of the child. Uh, it either is or is not worthy of concern. And whether it's your or theirs has really nothing to do with what it is. And likewise, if there's intrinsic, if you're going to accept the intrinsicness of the value of the conscious diamonds we're producing, those consciousness diamonds do not become non-existent because they're in somebody else's brain. Uh, just sorry there's no reason <laughs> to invisibilize them uh, in such a manner there's no logic to it there's no it's just something you made up it's an idea that somehow things can fall out of reality by hiding them in a them you just there's I can't think of any anything that would make that reasonable <laughs> because I think the only things that can hide in thems are things you don't want to uh, have exist. You're just using it as a some sort of magic garbage disposal, you know, truth disposer. I'll just dispose of a truth by putting it in a them. Uh, that's all I see. Uh, I don't see any reason to do that. I don't see any logic to do that. I don't, it never even occurred to me to do that. So I can say that much. It never even occurred to me to think I could undo something by putting it in a them or associating it somehow with a them. And now somehow it didn't happen. It wasn't an event. It isn't a reality. Uh, the configuration of brain that creates the intrinsic thing somehow isn't a configuration of brain if it's not my brain. That, that makes no sense. Uh, I mean, I can't make it make any sense. So you're saying you're somehow I'm the one who has to prove something. I think you're the one with the claim that made up. I won't even call it extraordinary. I'll just call it a blunt <laughs> made up assertion. Uh, and so yeah, I, where's the evidence for it? Where's the reasoning to make something invisible by putting it in a location? How does location have anything to do with any of the mechanisms that create intrinsic value. How could location possibly be relevant to the existence of the value? I could put a bunny rabbit, seven, I could put my clone seven light years away on another planet. Uh, doesn't mean he doesn't exist. I mean, distance obviously doesn't do it, <laughs> you know, so I just don't, this doesn't, it's not an argument, it's not logical, it's not 
something I can make any sense out of. The consequences of the existence of this value are the consequences. I mean, you keep arguing both subjects at the same time. First, you tell me there's no intrinsic value, and you accept the logical conclusions, and now you're just basically back to shoving the two things together again and arguing consequentialism about whether you have a, uh, an intrinsic ought. <laughs> well, because now you've decided that the thing doesn't, you know, doesn't have, a, location somehow matters. I, you know, a located ought. Uh, no. Anyway. Yeah, fisherman. Uh, so I go running. Uh, busy day today. Unfortunately. So, till the next time and such. Okay, out again. Yep. Ooh, kind of wet though. Just rained. A little shower, so good for the stuff to grow and all that kind of crap. So I guess it's good and necessary, but yeah, yeah messy. Anyway, um, all right. Yeah, it's still the same subject. Okay, so Hotla Day is basically just moving the goalpost here. You know, it forces me to argue for in defense of the intrinsicness of sentient experience. And now we're back to arguing I can hide it inside of, um, you know, special thems, and it goes away. I don't know. Uh, you conceded the point before that if it's intrinsic, that it would be logically appropriate to see one pawn is a pawn is a pawn is a pawn, and now, no. <clears throat> we don't accept that argument. Pawn isn't a pawn, isn't a pawn, isn't a pawn. This sort of relates to uh, Antikonovod. We see through some of that in his video. Um, thinking that uh, concern is not a respect for other people. It's not something you do intellectually. It's something you're supposed to do biologically or something. But he doesn't understand anything about evolution. So I don't even know what to do with him. Because he obviously hasn't, I, he doesn't have the necessary credentials. You know, you would think an atheist would know something <laughs> about the theory of evolution and that the theory of evolution isn't the theory of cultural evolution, you know, the theory of biological evolution um, and the evolution of our intelligence or knowledge base. Um, clearly, if salmon could know what was they were in for, <laughs> you know, swimming upstream. They wouldn't swim upstream. Uh, you know, they wouldn't go to the fresh water and die. Um, you know, they'd black off in the ocean. They'd figure out how to do it. If it even if, it, you know, who knows what they feel when they do this anyway. Um, but anyway, um, uh, so yeah, sexually we've completely changed and how we have sex, usually, you know, humans, over the last 40,000 years. The relationships are very different. Uh, we did have harems, sort of. You know, the alpha males had a family of females, and, you know, that's the way they, the, it worked for our ancestors. And, uh, you know, uh, tribal kind of bullshit. Um, winners, losers. And uh, probably lots of fooling around going on. Um, but anyway, um, what do I want to say about this? Yeah, so, so the fact that you've turned this into, you know, and, and obviously going way back, there was no masturbating, all that kind of stuff. They did not do any of that shit. <laughs> you know, so, um, but you can see it in dogs, for example. They learn that if they ain't getting any, um, you know, and they hump a leg, they'll have sex, and they'll even start humping the ground, because they'll know it works. They can have sex with the ground, <laughs> so they'll do it. Um, so, so yeah, they're already exercising some learned behavior, and the fact that we have social norms and rituals that we program our children into, in terms of, um, 
behaviors that are appropriate in terms of the dance of um, making love uh, verbally and physically. Uh, yeah, that's not that doesn't have anything to do with evolution, the theory of evolution. That has to do with the evolution of culture and knowledge. Not the same thing. It's not a DNA thing anymore. That's something happening outside the DNA in books and in law and in tradition. That doesn't have anything to do with a DNA molecule. But the desire still does. And the fact that that desire is conditionable is a fact of the DNA molecule. And certainly we could condition kids, uh, you know, sexually, probably, uh, to not even need the other sex to have sex. It's probably quite possible, um, depending on how you maturate a child. So, um, yeah, this is just, these people don't know. <laughs> this, this is just stupid to have to explain. This is like fifth grade kind of, you know, facts. You know, Hathaway Day thinks we're supposed to just play a game that has something to do with caring instead of doing the logic that has to do with respecting and acknowledging. Yeah, acknowledging a truth isn't the same thing as feeling the truth. <laughs> you know, there's lots of truths we acknowledge that we don't want to be true. Uh, but we know they're true, and we tend, well, at least some of us tend, to respect the fact that facts are sometimes inconvenient. Hush. Rid of these extra rocks people keep throwing in here. They don't realize they start building a dam, raises the water, <laughs> you know, and the rocks get flooded and they wash down the stream. Gotta leave enough space for the vata. Anyway, okay, so my run and such. <sighs> ah, yes, first swim of the year. Yeah, that was nice. Uh, it didn't last too long because the water's freezing. But, uh, yeah, it did wake you up. Um, you know, it was an event that happened in the universe. Uh, because it happened to me doesn't mean it didn't happen in the universe. I mean, I know it wasn't you, <laughs> but uh, you're doing things in the universe. There are happenings in the universe. Yes, you're doing them, but it doesn't change the fact that they're being done. They're happenings in the universe. Yeah, I just don't see how you get around that one. <laughs> yeah, this whole, it didn't happen because somebody else did it. That just doesn't make any sense at all. Somebody else is doing it. Therefore, it's not happening. Huh? No. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Expressions. That's all I can make is, what? Uh, I can't do anything more than that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can believe the universe ends you know, here, and then it's a different universe over there, but I think you're making a mistake. So anyway, that's enough. I really don't want to do philosophy. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. I'll be tired. Why that is? Oh, I guess because I'm sick of it. When you're sick of something, you're tired of it. Pretty much, pretty much those two things go together. Anyway, until next time.